always have trouble adjusting my camera. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Leader 461. I am Dr. Charles M. Cattermall, also known as Dr. C or Mike, Charlie, or whatever makes you feel comfortable. Welcome. Um, glad to have you in class during this volunteer experience. I do like to start off each week with a brief video lecture of sorts, very, very informal. Um, you know, so um, this week we're going to focus on two areas. And as I look, hang on one second here, the first topic we're going to discuss has to do with your educational career goals. Uh, you know, that's an interesting topic because uh, what I found over the years is that life changes a whole lot. So <clears throat> what you choose to seek now you may not want in the future. In other words, it's very common for adults in the work world today to change careers many times. Um, there's this statistic floating out there. I don't know where from. They try to teach this to me in grad school that the average adult, how you define average is another question within itself. The average adult changes uh, her or his career five times in a lifetime. It tends to be true, at least in my book. Um, I, I've had a lot of different experiences out in the world. So uh, that could be the case. And so the reason why is uh, I don't know how you grew up and what your experiences were, but I'm an 80s kid. So here's point A, here's point B. And A is when you begin life, B is, you know, uh, 100 years later or whatever, right? So in between, you have this, the mentality is that life's a straight line, meaning that, you know, you finish grade school, you go to high school, you choose a profession, you either, you know, you join the service around where I grew up, work at the factories, um, go to college, uh, you know, take a trade, you know, so be a priest, you know, whatever it is, right? So, or non- um, but, you know, the truth about life, it's more like this. It's a lot more random and chaotic. There is no straight line to a goal. There's a lot of obstacles um, in the midst of all that. And we change and we evolve because of our experiences. So when we get out in that work world, what satisfies, satisfies, satisfies us now may not in the future. We have other needs we want to pursue, other interests, and we're able to do that. Uh, you know, back in the day, and there's nothing wrong with sticking to one job, one career your whole life. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but largely, we have different options. We have a lot of options and opportunities to educate ourselves way above and beyond uh, traditional education. So someone, you know, who's an adult with kids may be going for their doctorate or whatever. Um, that's completely normal. That's part of the norm now. So we have a lot of options and opportunities. So um, I don't want you to feel that the degree you're pursuing and the career that you're pursuing needs to be your life. You'll figure out what interests you and what changes you need to be made based on those experiences. They actually call it the process of discovery. What I've found over the years, and there's differences in the way that individuals work, the way human beings work. So there's a certain degree of truth. We need to work as a means to an end so that we can provide for ourselves, family, or whatever. Sure, you know, we I work, I get a check, therefore there's a transaction with that organization, that transactional relationship. Okay, wonderful. But what we're also finding is over the years is that a lot of times individuals work for meaning. They want the, some meaning behind their work. They want to have some kind of connection with the work that they do and the organization they work for. And that also makes sense because you're spending all that time in a building or for a company. Yeah, of course you want to have that connection with the work that you do and the organization that you work with. Uh, back in the day, you know, um, the mentality was, oh, I just want to be happy at work. And, you know, you look at someone and you go, happy? Are you kidding me? What do you mean happy? Do you have a job? Do you have a paycheck? That's great. You know, buck up and deal with it. And that's basically was the mentality. And now we're in a situation where um, 
we can have that work-life balance, that work-life separation, have pride in the company we work for and the work that we do. And a lot of employees these days will vote with their feet and leave in these bad environments if they can find another job. So we can see that in many respects in more modern times that people are leaving, especially during the pandemic. Um, it's usually not about money either. Money's a factor, but it's usually about the work environment and having a connection with the work that they do. And for that, it really doesn't matter what it is that you do. It's what you gain from it, the value you gain from it. So I, there's a distinct difference and uh, change in trends as far as the meaning of work, which is wonderful. Um, so if you look at the definition, I, I used to do a lot of presentations pre-COVID, uh, eventually I'll get back on the road again. But if you look at the definition of work, and it has four words that are cringing, labor, toil, struggle, and strife. Okay. Well, that sounds horrible. Who would ever want to work if it's related to labor, toil, struggle, and strife? So and then you look up the definition of retirement. Well, the definition of retirement is the end of work, usually due to old age. So the mentality would be that we go through labor, toil, struggle, and strife until we're too old. And then we get ready, you know, for, you know, to expire. It's, just, it's the saddest concept and mentality that I've heard over the years, the idea. And it's not true. We don't have to go through labor, toil, struggle, and strife to say we work. In fact, you know, I mean, there's going to be days where we will. You're going to have bad days. It happens to anybody. But the concept is that if you're not going through labor, toil, struggle, and strife, and you're loving what you're doing, you're not working, which is a good thing. By the traditional definition, anyway, you're not working. So you can give, you know, make your own word up or define work however you want. But at least by that definition, and I don't want you to work. I don't want you to go through labor, toil, struggle, and strife. We may at times. I have, of course, and so will you. But it's not like a long-term, forever kind of mentality that um, well, I guess was based on traditional concepts of work and labor and what work really meant, especially in the factory days and all that. Um, I don't know many people that work at factories anymore. You know, automation is a big one. So, yeah, that's labor, toil, struggle, and strike. We, we can go through that, but we don't need to do that our whole lives. So we have a lot of options out there. Remember, folks, you're the president and CEO of your own life. When you get out there in that work world and you decide this is not satisfactory for me, I need to make some changes, work on making those changes. Don't get stuck in being risk averse. It's called risk averse, sorry. Uh, because you know what? I know the security of knowing what you have, even if it's not good, is better than the unknown. But sometimes we need to jump out into that unknown and figure it out and uh, have experiences and enjoy our lives. And I think that's very important. I think that's more important than most things. Next little tip here. Um, you'll notice in the world that uh, some individuals like to compare uh, themselves to others. So if I ask someone what they do for work, I'm actually very interested in what you do. I'm not judging you. Um, you work here, you work there, wherever. You work at Arby's, great, wonderful. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm actually trying to connect with the person and learn more about the person. No judgment, right? But uh, a lot of individuals sometimes will go ahead and try to, you know, compare themselves, especially I noticed that in the early 20s, the individuals would try to do that. And the truth is, they are unsure about themselves a lot of the times. They might act all, I work for, you know, this big bank or this big corporation. That's great. That's wonderful. Great. That's congratulations on your accomplishment. But they don't need to judge others. It just doesn't work out very well. Just It's symptomatic of them and their insecurities about themselves. We all have issues from time to time. It's part of the game. So don't listen to those who are critical, and they will be critical out there. There'll be a lot of criticism out there. Trust me. Even when you go into the higher degrees, your colleagues, critical. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, so, so told me that my whole research idea was terrible, not a good idea. No one was going to want to deal with it. Well, 
I didn't listen to that person because they had nothing constructive and only destructive. And it worked out to my benefit. So be careful who you listen to because they don't know what they're doing either. It's kind of a journey out there. We all have to take it. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the boards.